This is Immerse, the podcast and book. Composer, sound artist Charlie Morrow explores immersion in public events, broadcasts, music, installations, and environmental systems. Immerse compares timelines in conversations with more than 40 collaborators. Immerse. 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 Love. Immersion. Do you want to um, uh, trigger my brain by asking me some questions? Start uh, with. That's a good idea. Hey, what I was going to ask you about immersivity um, are two questions. One is how is immersivity part of the, your practice as a as a composer and sound artist, and and the other is how how did you get there? When was your first awareness of immersivity and insp- inspiration? And how did that lead to where you are now? So one's a timeline and and descriptions of practice. Let me start with the timeline because I was thinking about that end of things when I was getting myself ready to make this call. I think it goes back to my experience of listening to uh, recordings in the BBC archives and working with recordings of rituals in which trance was induced. And my, my passion to find out how our bodies respond to sound, what we do with it, so to speak, how it affects us, and and thus why our connection, sonic connection, are always so powerful uh, in lots of areas. So I was curious about the parameters of, of music involved in trance, and I was curious about which parameters in particular, such as reiterative rhythms and so on, might be really effective in drawing people inside uh, the ritual itself into the into the ritual arena in uh, uh, spiritually and that's where Pauline and I started started our friendship too because we were both focusing uh, uh, quite a bit on sound and the body and this would have been in the late 60s and early 70s I did a series of short programs for the BBC of uh, collage really collaged excerpts from rituals around the world in which trance was induced and they were used as intermission programs in BBC recordings of uh, standard concert programs from the Royal Albert Hall I remember which always sort of amused me but from then on it's all the important the real importance of, of how the sound we're producing might be affecting our bodies and those of our listeners it's always been in the forefront in the sense of my mind when I'm when I'm working with sound. And skipping from there through to the Hudson River sound map, for example, and based on my experience as a kid of listening to moving water, rivers, etc., in New Zealand, I intended that sound map in good part to give listeners, especially New Yorkers, a visceral sense of the river's power through their audio cortex and through their whole bodies as the sound just sort of passes through one's body as one is listening, with the feeling that, that for a lot of New Yorkers, the Hudson's a visual marvel, as it were, uh, an important part of their lives visually. But most people really have an opportunity to encounter it as a phenomenon, as a substance, and, and certainly have a clear sense of its power. It's a simple element of just how the how powerful the currents are in the river. That's not really visible most of the time from the surface of your eyes. Are just scanning the surface. It's not at all apparent, uh, and they're immensely powerful. So, sort of starting consciously working with sound, the body, and connection to to and immersion in environment really started with the river archive and then the uh, Hudson River sound map. And it flows on through the sound map of the Danube and 
the Housatonic and the collaboration I did in 2014 with Bob Balecki at Caramore Wild Energy, which is an installation rooted in infra and ultrasound from non-human phenomena. And I can talk more about uh, the concept for wild energy. But just to give you a general timeline, I think that's pretty much how it's gone. And it, it, it applies to my concert pieces too, for that matter. Jan Wire and I just created a piece collectively called Into the Vanishing Point, which boils down to being our, a sort of lamenting or mourning, mourning really, about the disappearance of insect populations worldwide, uh, the collapse of insect populations and all the ramifications of that, you know, through the tears of other animals and, and uh, other beings in the world. So it was based on our, our recognition um, from reading of, uh, and hearing about the fact that that's happening and, and our response to it. Of course, we hope that audiences and listeners will get drawn in into that feeling vortex also. Well, that's a fantastic journey you've made. I uh, remember that we first met, I think, over pulsars. We both had, been, had an interest in pulsars. <laughs> and um, it seemed that you were already thinking beyond the orb of the Earth and beyond the uh, human size into smaller smaller universes as well, even then. I remember it was, it, it, it was uh, thrilling to hear the, 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 that particular pulsar and to hear its wonderful syncopated rhythms at that time. And just as it was thrilling and wild energy to, to be listening to solar oscillations talking about of expansions out into the universe and listening to them. It's a remarkable experience that is. Yes, we did make, uh, we've, we've, uh, our connection's been strong for a very long time, but we certainly connected over pulsars, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm really curious, uh, how, how is your own sense of immersion? Where do you hear yourself to be at this point, and how does that reflect in your works? Immersion is always immersion is always very strongly connected in my mind, and more and more explicitly so, with how we can overturn the inherited species hierarchy, which puts us always at the top and in an exploitive role, and and just see how we are an intrinsic part of the in this world, this planet, all its. its processes and, and life forms, how we're, how we're not separate from anything on our planet. We're all of us interconnected with all of those other life forms and, and phenomena. And I think sound is a wonderful channel for intuitively sensing connection because of its potent effects on our body. It's such an immediate conduit. <laughs> For, um, for that sense of connection. And, and my feeling strongly is that the more we recognize that as a given, which it is, to my mind, just submerged much of the time, um, the more we recognize it as a given, the more we can work within our environment to, to ensure that we don't continue to do harm, to see if we can alleviate harms which we have done and to acknowledge that we're going to have to work with environmental systems not to control them purely i think the, the one comes out of the other if we if our bodies and our, our imaginations can can recognize can really sense that our inter inter intertwinedness with everything else it's even more beyond the connection. We're just part of everything else, right? The more, more our whole systems can sense that intuitively, the more naturally we will work to come to terms with how we need to change, um, what we can do to, to alleviate some of the oncoming you know, cascade of climate change thing, effects uh, and processes that are going to otherwise overwhelm us and how we can just simply stop trying to control everything else. So that's, I think that's been behind, that was behind uh, the, the river sound maps. They are attempts to, to entice listeners, to draw listening ears in, actually into, inside a river. Feel its, its power, feel its structure, feel, feel its beauty. 
feel how it moves and be part of that movement. And it's just become a more explicit, explicitly defined for me, you know, aim as I've gone on through the years. Bob and I uh, wrote um, an introduction to Wild Energy when Caramore first mounted the installation. It's a seven, no, it's a... <laughs> more, it's, it's, I think we've, we're up to about nine, eleven speakers now. Arrayed outside in a, in a grove of trees within a rock fall at the very edge of the Caramore Estate in Katona, New York, which is a beautiful wild estate. I'm sure you're familiar with it. I bet you've been there. This is a really wild patch of Caramore. And, and so Bob did one of his gorgeous spatial arrays of speakers in amongst the rocks and the trees and wild energy, those various sounds from Mount Kilauea, from the sun, the solar oscillations, from bats and uh, big brown bats and tiger moths facing off, jamming each other's signals, uh, all sorts of different phenomenological sounds, choruses and whistlers and so on, just sort of float through those trees that come out of the rock with as immersive an effect as we can possibly engender. To which, to which end, we also set up a couple of hammocks in that space, which I've been dying to do that with an installation for years. I sort of figure that the more relaxed your body is, the more it's willing to absorb, and in this case, absorb sound energy. So you can just lie back in a hammock and stare up at the canopy and, and let all that go through your body and yourself. That's the most recent. That and the uh, uh, collaboration with Jan Wire, the most recent, my most recent attempt to create immersion and connection for people. Well, thank you. I appreciated hearing your ideas and you've been very inspiring to listen to your passion for what you hear and what you're translating what you hear into is, is phenomenal. So I, I thank you for today's interview and I'll be back and in touch about, you know, the next stage of production. Sure. But let me ask you a question, Charlie. Yeah, of course. <laughs> This is so great to have a chance to speak with you. So how do you feel that working with the acoustic environment and within the acoustic environment, um, what do you feel that induces in listeners or can induce? Well, I think that it, it, can, it induces everything. I believe that uh, we are immersed whether we like it or not. That we, yeah, absolutely. I, I see this at two ends of my life. Currently, as a sound installation maker, building systems that people can live and work in, that's what I do. I make sound systems for multiple rooms and locations. And I started out doing narrative pieces, but these are more about how these are sound, sound environments for, for work, for healing and so forth. For uh -huh. oh, They are always on. They don't, you don't turn them off. So it goes along with heat and light as part of construction, how people are building, uh -huh. building the world, both indoors and out. I feel it very strongly because I think that it's a missing element in the design of our built environment. And that's where I'm focusing yep. my energy. And then uh, on the other end of the story, I had the remarkable experience of, of waking up, becoming conscious of sound before I was born. I had done a regressive series of, of uh, thought journeys until I reached the stage before I was born when I was on my mother's uh, you know, operating system, so to speak. <laughs> and yeah. merged, and I heard sounds outside of her body. And uh, <laughs> l later on, I duplicated that for Westdeutsche Rundfunk radio, as it was very striking. And then when it, it was an amazing moment to uh, be shot out into the world of air and start to smell, because I, of course, uh, smell had not been in the picture in the same right. way. Uh, I was, yeah. you know, a liquid going through our pre-birth nostrils, it, it, uh -huh. it sense differently. It's more like the way you feel liquid when you're swimming or taking a bath on your fingers or your skin. And so that enormous transition has powered my journey. <laughs> wow. Oh, Charlie, that is amazing to hear and beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So, of course, we know, uh, we, we intellectually know that our lives are a whole, but you were absolutely experienced it as such, the con that continuation from pre-birth through the rest of your life. That's beautiful, man. <laughs> That's beautiful. I've always thought of it as a cross to bear, frankly, but <laughs> I'm glad that you oh, yeah? see the beauty in it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, and may I say one more thing about the subject or that perspective of environmental sound and, and hearing and sound being a conduit? Um, that's a very vibrant concept to me and a generative concept, of course. It's important in my life. And I often express it as this being, uh, given how Kilauea is coursing through my body if I'm listening to uh, a bench collapse in, in, uh, in Pu'u O'o vent, for example, given the way that sound is coursing through my body, as I experience that, I'm making a visceral connection to that vent. A real strong visceral connection, and I find that a compelling recognition, you know, of unity <laughs> with with that part of my environment, of our environment. It's not those sounds are not artifacts. They are energy captured, or a flow of energy captured as a recording at one point, but still highly energized, flowing on, continuing on through through me and and other people. And it's a it's a very visceral thing, which I, I find really powerful. I'm glad you did. I was going to ask you, since we live in a time based state of mind, how how you experience that as a time based experience? What what happens like from the time that you hear the sound and respond, and and it travels on? What what is what is that? audio tsunami for you? Um, the time element of it. What I don't experience is that, uh, that I'm hearing a record, <laughs> in a sense. I'm hearing an artifact, a snapshot. Uh, what I do experience is pure energy. Makes sense. My, my point was that it wasn't there, then you hear it, and it goes through you, and your whole body responds, as you described. And that was I was intrigued about that, because in a way, it's a, if you were to slow it down and look at the way it grew through you, I was just you know, wondering how, how it grows in your body when you experience it. It happens fast, but just, what do you feel? Ooh. Oh, <laughs> oh boy, that, uh, it, it's a sort of glowing, in, internal glowing. My body just I don't know, it becomes irradiated. It's, and it's emotionally thrilling. So that's tied up in the body, in my body's responses, of course, you know, as our emotions always are, <laughs> not separate either. So it's, it's thrilling. And then what makes me smile and amuses me still is that it's just, those sounds are just sheerly fascinating. They're so complex and they're really, really beautiful in themselves. So I'm also experiencing them that, that way is just, absolute beauty of sonic beauty and complexity and and relishing that too but i don't hear them as if they were an artifact you know no no uh, i i don't either i mean and what, what, no, once, I once the sounds uh, take you over i i had a, an early experience that uh, is was emblematic for this for me was which was uh I visited my father, who was on a military base as a military doctor, when I, when I was about one years old, and um, or maybe t somewhere between one and two. And I remember the military band came by, and the drums were so loud, I felt them inside of me, and I couldn't close my ears with my hands or anything. Yeah. I just the sound it became part of my body, and and it seemed yeah. like you were describing something very similar, and that's why I was pressing yeah. you for details. Uh, and I tried to at first close it out because it was so intense but then i i couldn't and i went with it and and i was changed by the sound yeah it's an exhilarating experience yes the sound is then part of your body or i feel sort of simultaneously enveloped in it which is a wonderful sensation and and permeated by it too it just is all of all the parts of my body are, are experiencing this and and i sort of believe they are um and it's totally exhilarating one is simultaneously i think propelled out of oneself one's everyday cognitive self and into a much much bigger space and that's such a relief <laughs> and <laughs> among other things <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Isn't it the most wonderful experience, that total immersion like that via sound? I mean, uh, lucky to have that experience. Over absolutely. and over again, we do. <laughs> it's true. It's yeah. our. It's the basis for our life's work, and uh, yeah, we visit oh, yeah. it again and again in each in, in different ways, uh, and sometimes mm -hmm. it, it it visits us. <laughs> yes, as with your prenatal memories, right? Maybe. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's a, it's a it's a beautiful thing to be writing about. Uh, congratulations and 
and and thanks to you for for taking this tackling this it's a lovely thing to be writing about charlie can't wait to see what how your book what it says what it i can't wait to see what it will teach me and oh, it will well it's a, it will i appreciate very much having the opportunity to share these thoughts with you cuz uh, you you you're such a a sensitive read in, in this vibratory universe and uh, at the same time a generator so it's a uh, thank you thank you charlie and i'd love to see you it's always I, really good to see you and it hasn't uh, been eight for ages do you well, come in and out of new york every now and then in I your do. physical body <laughs> yes my physical body makes it to new york now and again so uh, uh-huh. I, I'll, I'll write you and um, do you get into manhattan or Oh yeah. Well, well then um we'll make a date. I'll be in touch with you about this project and uh, a piece yeah. of it which may may be interesting to you um which is its interviews with uh, a lot of colleagues of mine and collaborators and uh yeah. with a bio and a kind of a over- overarching view of the different hats that, that Michael Gerson wore because uh, in immersivity electronic immersivity he's the Einstein he's the inventor he invented ambisonics and uh, wow. he he was also involved in, in recording improvised music and choir music he recorded i met him when i played with derek bailey in company week regrettably he uh, he died at 52 so he's an interesting important uh, history yeah. maker for immersivity sure. well i didn't and i didn't know his name either I thought to mention it yeah because it's really obscure. Well, thank you for today. I wish you a lovely day and uh, we'll thank be talking you. soon. Thank you. Yeah, that'll be a pleasure, Charlie. And thank you for thank you for approaching me and and including me. I'm, I'm it is a great compliment. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. This is Charlie Morrow for Immerse Sound Light Space. Thank you. This is Immerse, the podcast and book. We are delighted to have you join us. Immerse is produced by Charlie Morrow, Sean McCann, and Bart Plantenga for Morrow Sound, Vermont and Helsinki and Recital Edition Los Angeles I'm Anaya Lockwood Immerse 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 Immerse